Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you another variation of the triaxle weave. This one is called pinwheel triaxle and it is quite a neat design. Like all triaxle weaves, it is done in three dimensions and it is really important that you bring quite a bit of patience while learning this one. The technique itself is fairly easy, but learning it is not. It is nothing that you can't handle, but you do need to be prepared for it. Now that I have scared you, let me show you how to do it. Now, as far as supplies go, you're going to need an object that you would like to wrap. You're also going to need two colors of paracord, which we're going to cut into smaller sections. Now, you're also going to need something to cut the cords with, as well as a lighter. You're going to need two rubber bands, as well as a lacing needle. With these supplies ready, you have the basics. I also recommend getting some thread which you can use to bind the ends of your wrap to secure it. With that said, we can finally begin. As you can see, this is a three-dimensional wrap. We're going to start with the first dimension and to do that, you're going to need two pieces of paracord. These are fairly long. We're going to wrap from the top to the bottom of the wrap and this is going to be the length of the wrap. As you can see, I have already placed a rubber band at the top and the bottom and we're going to start by feeding the two ends under the top rubber band. At this point, all we're going to do is wrap around the mandrel from top to bottom. So like this. Once you reach the bottom, feed your two ends under the bottom rubber band. At this point we have completed the first dimension and one really important tip is that you need to loosen up this wrap a bit. To do that, simply wind it in the opposite direction, pulling in some of your ends. After loosening up the cords in the wrap so that it isn't too tight, nor to loose, we're going to continue with the second dimension. The second dimension cords run from top to bottom of the wrap. The cords need to be at least as long as the wrap is. I like to add a third to about a half more just to make things a bit easier. So the cords that I'm going to be using will be about one and a half times the length of the wrap. You're going to need cords of two different colors and we're going to alternate between the two. So first the cord of one color, then the cord of the other color, and then the cord of the first color again, and so on. The sequence in this second dimension is always going to be over one, under two, but what is going to change is how we start our sequence. So let me show you what I mean. Take a cord and attach a lacing needle to it. The color of the cord doesn't matter. Start your sequence with an over one, under two. Then over one, under two, and again over one, under two. Continue the same way all the way down to the bottom of the wrap. Thank you. 
and then take another chord, this time of another color. We're going to start the sequence with the second chord a bit differently. We're going to start with an under 2, then continue over 1, under 2, over 1, under 2. So the sequence is the same, all we changed was how we started it. Then over 1, under 2, and so on until you reach the bottom. Then take another chord, again of another color, And we're going to start the third sequence a bit differently as well. We're going to start with an under one, then continue the same sequence we used before. So over one, under two. Over one, under two. Over one, under two. Over 1, under 2. Continue all the way down to the bottom. At this point, we have done three chords. We will now repeat the same sequence, starting with the first chord. So the first chord starts with an over one, under two. The second chord starts with an under two. And the third chord starts with an under one. So the next chord, is going to be of another color again, so the different color than the previous chord. And we're going to start over one, under two. Over one, under two. Over one, under two. Continue the same way until you reach the bottom.
then the next chord again of a different color And this chord is going to follow the same sequence as the second chord that we did. So we're going to start with an under 2. Then over 1, under 2. Over 1, under 2. And so on. Then the next chord, again of another color, and we start the third chord the same way that we did the third chord in the first sequence. So, under one, then over one, then under two, over one, under two, and so on. So, I think that you have found the sequence. We do three chords, each starts with a different beginning and then continues over one, under two, over one, under two. Again, the first chord starts over one, under two, just like our basic sequence. The second one starts with an under two. And the third one starts with an under one. Now fill up the rest of the wrap with the chords, starting again a sequence of three chords, then again three chords and so on until you fill up the wrap. Once you fill out your wrap with your chords, you're going to notice that you have quite a bit of space between each of the chords. What you can do here is basically push them up together. And this way, you get more space to add a few more chords. 
One thing that you need to look out for is once you do a set of three and you want the finish, you may find that you have two cords of the same color next to each other. At this point, you need to cram in three more cords so that you get the same color sequence of one color, then the other, then one color, and then the other. So the next one here would be 10, then another purple, and then a 10, then a purple. Two more tips that I would like to share is to straighten out your cords. Simply pull on both of the ends and this is going to straighten out your cords. Simple and easy. The other thing is that if you come to this situation where I have rotated my colors so they are in a proper sequence but once I reach my first chord with my last chord, the chords are either doubled or not in a proper sequence. The sequence will be proper when you get this spiral effect. I hope you can see it, it's basically over once line up in a spiral. Now, if this isn't the case once you finish, you will have to add a couple more chords. So in this case, my two chords are parallel. I'm going to need to add two more chords in order to get the proper sequence around and around my wrap. This is not something that always happens, but if it does, you will need to add a couple of more chords. If the sequence still doesn't line up properly, then you have probably made a mistake lining up your chords. Just a quick tip, but I think it is important. For the third dimension, we are again going to prepare chords of alternating colors. We're going to make sure they are longer than the wrap. And we're going to take a cord with a lacing needle attached. The sequence this time is going to be under 3 over 3. We're going to look for a Z shape like we have here. And we're going to go under this Z, so under 3. Then we're going to look for an over 3. The over 3 will have two chords on top of one chord, so three chords. Then we're going to look for another Z, which will be our next under 3. Go under this Z. And at this point, you can see the sequence. So we have a Z with two chords of one color and one chord of the other color. Then over three, then a Z of two chords of the other color and one chord of one color. The next is going to be an over three here and then another under Z, so under 3. So this is going to be the under 3. Then another over 3 here and then another under Z. So this one. Continue the same way until you reach the top. 
so over 3 and under z and over 3 and under z over 3 under z And then another over 3. And at this point, I'm going to place my cord under the top rubber band. We're now going to take a cord of the other color. The sequence with the next chord is going to be again an under 3 over 3. But this time we're going to do the opposite of the first chord. So where the first chord is going over 3, we're going to go under 3. And the opposite. Where it goes under, we go over. This is easier seen than explained, so let me show you. So. First, we're going to find where our other chord, the first one, is going under. It goes under this Z. So here, on the right, we have three chords over which we're going to go. So we start maybe like this the start doesn't really matter and where it goes under the z we go over over three chords just like before like this so two on top one on the bottom then the next z where we go under is this one It's going to get a lot clearer once you see how it looks like. And let's do another one. So again, over three. So two chords with one under. And then the next Z. This one. So like this. If you see, right where we come into a Z here, we come out with our second chord. And where we come out, we go in with our second chord. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it is something that you need to do. Continue with an over 3, then under 3, then over 3, under 3,
over 3. Under 3. Over 3 and under Z. Then over 3 and under the rest of the Z here on top. Now, if we take a look, you can see how the chords lie. We're now going to switch to another chord, again of the first color. The third chord is again of the other color. So the first color. We're going to start by finding another Z under which we're going to go. So this Z is on the right side of our second chord and where the second chord is going over, we're going to go under. So under here. Then over 3 and under 3, which is another Z. Then over 3 and under Z. Now, if you're unsure if you're doing this correctly, here is the proof that you are. So, here we have a pinwheel that has a nice over one, under one sequence, and the sides are already forming. So, just continue. So, over three. under 3. Over 3, under 3. Over 3. under 3 over 3 under 3 At this point, we have done three chords. You can already see pinwheels forming. At this point, you would follow your last chord with an over three under three, just like we did with the previous chords. You can also look at the pattern of the pinwheels, which can help you see where the next chord should be going. So just so you don't call me cheap when it comes to this tutorial, I'm going to show you one more chord. So again, we take a look at the previous one and see where the Z is, where we're going under. So we're going to go over here. We can start under here. 
at the very bottom. Then over three, under three. It is actually very simple once you get used to it. But while you're getting used to it, it can be a bit of a pain. Then over three, under Z. Over three, under Z. Over three, under Z. So after completing the wrap, you will want to tighten it up by pulling on all of the ends to get a nice consistent weave. At this point, what I'm going to do is place my wrap between two planks in order to make it more consistent. So what we do is basically we roll our weave. You can already see the difference, but a bit more rolling would be appropriate. Now at this point, how would you finish this wrap? Well, you are mainly interested in the nice looking part, so you will want to cut the excess cords off. But before you cut them off, what we're going to do is do a binding. To do a binding, you start on one end, you take a piece of thread, you place it over like this, go around like this, around again, over the standing end here on the left side, Then under the X in the middle. And this ties a constrictor knot. You will want to place it at the beginning of your wrap. Then tighten up firmly. Now wrap around a few times and do wrap around very tightly in order to bind your wrap. If you don't do this as tight as you can, it may slip out. Now once you're happy with your binding, we're going to finish on this side with a constrictor knot as well. So wrap around, make an X shape, then wrap around and go under this X. Then tighten up. And if you want to further secure it, you could do a couple of knots. 
This is absolutely optional since the constrictor knot is fairly secure. Like this. Cut the thread and you have a secure binding on one side. You would also do the other and then cover this binding with some sort of a decorative knot. I very much like the Spanish ring knot, which looks something like this. So I'm going to place a couple of Spanish ring knots here over my bindings. So guys, with all of that done, we are now at the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.